kind of the role of the solicitor because I think it comes up from time to time. And I think really as a starting place, we have to look at section 1102 of the second class township code, which provides that solicitors, quote, shall direct and control the legal matters of the township. And additionally, section 1103 of the code provides that solicitors have broad powers to, quote, prepare or approve any bonds, obligations, contracts, leases, conveyance, ordinances, and assurances to which the township may be a party, commence and to prosecute all actions brought by the township for or on account of any of the estates, rights, trusts, privileges, claims, or demands, as well as defend the township or any township officer against any and all actions or suits brought against the township or township officer in which any of the estates, rights, privileges, trusts, ordinances, or accounts of the township may be brought in question before any court in this commonwealth and, most importantly, do every professional act incident to the office. As this board knows, the township issued resolution 2023-39 in order to, quote, reaffirm the duties of the township super, uh, solicitor in order to address questions raised by, quote, one member of the board. And it specifically reaffirmed, authorized, and directed the township solicitor to perform any and all professional acts related to the township solicitor's representation of the township. Additionally, this resolution reaffirmed the township manager's ability to direct the solicitor to take actions. Expanded. Further, the resolution, quote, reaffirms and recognizes that the township solicitor is authorized to, in response to a communication from an individual supervisor, take actions of a minor nature, consult with the manager or majority of the board, or take actions that, quote, in the reasonable judgment of the township solicitor is required or needed. Accordingly, the solicitor is currently authorized to broadly perform any and all professional acts related to the role of solicitor. With this above framework in mind, I noticed that Supervisor Hughes had made a number of notations on legal invoices, and I responded with a six-page document addressing those questions. In June, I had expenses of $369.43, representing the filing fees, sheriff service and postage, and $13,910.50 in time, and that is 64.7 hours at $215 an hour. I did not bill the township for $1,225.50 worth of my time or an additional $143.10 in expenses during the month of June. And I wanted to make sure that the township was aware of that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, comments or questions? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, a lot of the charges that he puts under my name are things like where you forward emails to him for his review, are things that I have no control over, okay? I'm just part of his legal attacks on me, okay? I'm an elected official. This guy's supposed to be working for me, but he's only working against me constantly, okay? And I think it's pretty obvious, his attitude towards me, and it needs to stop. And my concern is what he didn't say about the section in the Second Class Township Code is that all of that is at direction of the board. And his resolution took that power out of our hands, and we willingly gave it up. In fact, I said at the time of his resolution that we just lost control, the board just lost control of this township. He, in, in, in essence, runs this township now. He's injecting himself in everything, in everything. And it's, a pro it's become a problem, as we'll find out pretty close in the near future. And uh, I don't think we need a rebuttal from Mr. Schnee. He's, he's said enough. He, he dominated. This is the Board of Supervisors <coughs> meeting, not the Schnee meeting. Ed. This is section 1103, where you hear uh, Solicitor Schnee pontificate on this section uh, as far as his duties as a solicitor. And he wrote a resolution which basically undermines this st section. It's a state statute, must be followed. But here's what Schnee conveniently forgets. When directed or requested so to do. Directed or requested so to do by who? By guess who? The Board of Supervisors. He doesn't have the, the free will to do whatever he wants to do. When directed or requested so to do. Every professional act incident to the office which the township solicitor may be authorized 
are required to do, again, by the Board of Supervisors. Here, stated again, is what Schnee conveniently forgets. Authorized. Required. By the Board of Supervisors. Schnee must be terminated. In this July 8, 2024 Board of Supervisors meeting, Schnee pontificates again on his duties as solicitor. We looked at so the section 1103 uh, earlier, which determines, which delineates and summarizes his duties as a solicitor, and that should be enough. But now we will look at closely resolution number 2023-39. He references this again in his pontificating uh, speech in July 8th meeting. This is Schnee's work. He, he created this resolution. He convinced the board to pass it, claiming that this was strictly reiterating the duties of township solicitor. You'll find that this resolution does much more than that. Uh, he wrote it, and he had, he had the board adopt it. This is his primary source he uses to claim his broad powers. Powers that he has abused. Let's take a look at this resolution titled Reiterating the Duties of Township Solicitor. It does more than that, as you will see. He uses this to expand his control. Let's take a closer look at his nonsense. Here is the first section of his resolution, 2023-39. And we will look at this in three sections. This is where Schnee exposes his very thin skin. What does this have to do with the solicitor's duties? Why reaffirm? But notice this. More importantly, he singles out one member of the board that dared to question the duties and responsibilities of the Office of Township Solicitor. So here, in this, in this little paragraph, he attacks a supervisor, an elected supervisor, trying to uh, suppress a supervisor's questioning the activities of a contractor. One member of the board. There actually should have been five members of the board that re uh, looked at this and asked him questions. And then... How do we know this to be true? I have evidence it may not. Opinions coming from, from his, this is his opinion. This is Chadwick Schnee's opinion. In all instances. This claim, in all instances, uh, it, it was directed or authorized or required by the township manager of the board. This doesn't reiterate his duties, until he was able to get the board to pass this, the manager could not direct his activities. Only the board, as, 11, as a section 1103, stipulates. Now we have this. We stated the obvious. And from section 1103, and, and the third whereas above. But note again, he obfuscates this by excluding from section 1103 the following comments, the following text, when directed or requested by the Board of Supervisors, when authorized or required by the Board of Supervisors. You won't hear Schnee reference this in his pontification at the July 8th meeting. In fact, you never hear him mention these two very important parts of the duties uh, and, direct, and where he gets his direction. It doesn't exist. To follow up uh, with part two, you've seen part one of Schnee's Resolution 2023-29. This part is very busy. It could be a little confusing, but this part of his resolution is amazing. I believe it's illegal 
But let's take a look at it. Remember, this is to reiterate the solicitor's duties. As you will see, as Schnee states, be it further resolved, here he is addressing the manager's duties, not the duties of the solicitor. But he's enhancing and giving power and authority to the manager, who should not have it. It undermines the board and, again, Section 1103 and strips the oversight of legal issues from the board. I often, in meetings, have had to ask our manager, what directive have you given the solicitor? The board is never fully appraised. So here it is, reaffirming his duties, Schnee slips in the manager. And uh, this shouldn't even be in here. This is a resolution for his duties, not the manager's duties, but you can see how he slips this in. Now, here is where we're really going down the rabbit's hole in Schnee's Wonderland. He gives the manager this power to direct, authorize, and require township solicitor to take any and all actions relative to the solicitor's representation of the township. Here we see, again, what I call the Schnee Clause. Any and all actions so totally ambiguous and dangerous. There it is, under the pink lines. Very dangerous. So the manager now can take any action, authorize the solicitor actually to take any and all actions in his representation of the township, uh, completely cutting out the Board of Supervisors. Uh, I, I've had a lot of trouble dealing, uh, accepting this. But it gets worse. Schnee has further reduced the Board's oversight. And how has he done that? Well, the manager now has the power of the board on all legal issues. But look at this. Most disturbing is he has the right to assign this power to anyone. Just to anyone. How can he do this? He could, you know, theoretically, he could say, well, my wife is going to have this power now because I'm, I'm, I'm going on a fishing trip. Or he could give Schnee's wife the power. He could designate, it doesn't, it doesn't restrict him to who he could de designate it to. And look at this again. Remember this. Any and all actions. Any and all actions. He's rewritten the second class township code and he's undermined the good, our good governance. So let's take a look at the, the next uh, section, further resolve. This further weakens the board's powers and contradicts section 601 shown below. And this section is right out of the township, uh, second class township uh, statute. And you can see the township shall be governed and supervised by boards and supervi of supervisors, not by the manager and not by the solicitor. We are governed by a board of five, not by a board of one. And this is what's really dangerous. He reaffirms and recognizes that individuals Uh, he's attempting to create, well, basically he's attempting a structure where he can work with one or two supervisors separate from the board. This is what has been happening. Schnee has circumvented the second class township code. He has violated his trust and his duties to the township. And the board of directors. He has manipulated a group of unsophisticated supervisors. Otherwise, I would have to call them corrupt. So here you have it. He isolates the board. He gives 
authority to the manager who can assign that authority to anyone, to anyone. And then he further complicates matters by insisting in this uh, further resolve that he can work with individual board members. More importantly, he could take direction from this individual board member, read it and weep. Now we'll go on to the last part, part three, and, and wrap this up. This is the third part, the last part of Resolution 2023-39. At the very top, I copied over the last sentence from the last slide for continuity and context. Schnee ends his resolution confirming his power. And Schnee is all about power and control for the sake of billable hours. But also, he needs to project the impression that he is the smartest person in the room. And we know he is not. He has the board uh, to reaffirm his, his authorization to take actions based on his judgment. I have to question his judgment, and I hope that you do Two, the solicitor should never take any actions without approval from the Board of Supervisors. And this is precisely why our township government is a mess. He may inquire, according to the, his, his document, he may inquire with the manager or the majority of the board. And as we know in part two, we saw uh, he can also communicate with an individual supervisor and take actions based on that communication without board authority. He continues to give the manager the authority of the whole board. And he's established that one supervisor in private communication with him will allow him to perform certain actions. We don't have any idea what these certain actions might be. We do know that they can be directed by one supervisor, totally undermining the control and the responsibility of the whole board of supervisors. Now, item three is particularly broad. And it says he may take other actions in his judgment perhaps like selling the promenade to Berks County Redevelopment Authority or hiring RHM that has uh, basically uh, siphoned off almost a million dollars of our revenue on the, on the uh, banquet business. Or how about Cafferlin? $22,000 a month for part-time management services. He can take any action he wants to in his judgment, undermining the board and making the manager the equal, the equal of the board of supervisors. And this is, I say to this, no, no, no. 1103 makes it clear. What he does, the actions he take takes, must be at the direction of the board of supervisors period. Now, here, here we have the final thing I'm going to talk about, and this is Schnee. He provides the manager equal standing with the board. Schnee may take action at the consent of the manager. The manager can initiate can settle, can initiate litigation, can settle litigation, and can discontinue litigation on behalf of the township. The manager can do this. This is what Mr. Schnee's resolution says. It takes the power and the responsibility, not the responsibility actually, but the power and the authority. Our manager can do this. In fact, our manager right now, if he wanted to, could just say, we're going to discontinue the litigation against Supervisor Hughes. But of course they won't do that. So this is amazing. 
And this is really uh, one last thing I want to make a statement on, and then this will be the end of my review of Mr. Schnee and uh, his uh, uh, supposed con control over this township and his pontificating in July 8th meeting concerning his duties and responsibilities. And this is a subject this is a subject and this is a resolution that needed more scrutiny than it had received. We cannot continue to operate this government with an agreement such as this. Schnee is not only dominating and directing our legal issues, he has inserted himself in management, in management issues and decisions. He has control of the Board of Supervisors, and he has stripped the Board of Supervisors of real authority. As you can see, he has elevated the manager as equal to the Board of Supervisors. In this way, he controls the manager. We have had one manager or an, after another, and the common trait in these managers is a lack of ability and professionalism. This allows Schnee total control of our township. We must end this, and we must end it quickly. Thank you for listening to me and watching my video. I appreciate it.